This started on April 19th, but I was just telling my friends about it earlier, and one of them suggested I share it here. Like many people, I have a Discord account. It has my first name and a picture of myself since I used it to talk to friends I know in real life, so I didn't mind having my face there. Recently, I decided to try Minecraft again for the first time in four years because my friends were discussing an upcoming update and wanted us all to play together. I thought I'd hop on early to get familiar with the new mechanics. I found a server and had been playing on it for about four days when I learned they offered in-game rewards for linking your Discord account to their server. Drawn by the chance to earn something shiny, I joined their Discord server. It had about 400 users online, so I didn't think much about anyone noticing me, especially since I was pretty far down the list alphabetically. As I got more comfortable with the player base, I started chatting in the server's text chat. There was a side channel meant for selling and game items, so I posted a message saying I was looking to buy something. About four hours later, some guy tagged me with, I'll give it to you for free handsome. I wasn't sure how to respond, so I just replied, Okay, thanks. He responded, No problem. Shortly after this interaction, this person kept requesting to teleport to me in game. When I'd ask why, he'd say, I just want to hang out with you, or something along those lines. He did this every time I was online, following me around my base for about an hour, asking me questions about random things before eventually leaving. I'm usually not the type to interact with people much when I'm gaming, I just keep to myself, so this behavior made me uncomfortable. After about three days of this, he stopped calling me handsome, and started calling me sexy in-game through private messages. I politely asked him to stop calling me that, but he didn't respond. Two hours later he messaged me again, asking how old I was. Hesitantly I replied, 21. Again, no response. Feeling uneasy, I decided to log off for the night. Two days later I booted up my PC and opened Discord, only to find a private message from him, asking me to call him next time I was online. I ignored it, and closed the chat. By this point, this guy was seriously freaking me out. I have bad anxiety, especially when I receive unwanted attention. So I just turned off my PC and watched some YouTube in bed on my phone. The next day, I opened Discord because a friend wanted me to watch him play Hearthstone and give him advice. We did that for about an hour, and then he logged off. About 40 minutes later, the guy who had been acting weird tried to call me. I had a momentary lapse of judgment and thought it was my friend calling, so I accepted. I realized my mistake almost immediately and muted my mic. I could hear him eating potato chips, and after a few seconds he said, "Aw, don't mute. I'm curious to hear you speak, followed by a small giggle. He had a German accent and a strange, creepy tone. His voice was high-pitched and quivery. He started talking about how attractive he thought I was. He also mentioned how I hadn't been online for a few days. Then he put a picture in the chat and said, What do you think of that? It was an explicit photo. I immediately ended the call, closed Discord, and started freaking out internally. About five days later, I got back on the Minecraft server, and as soon as I logged in, this guy messaged me. I decided to open Discord and block him for good. When I checked our conversation, there were eight unread messages from him, and about five of them said, Thinking of you. I quickly blocked him and quit Discord. Back in the game, I used the ignore command, which was the same as blocking him there too. This whole experience was just so bizarre and unsettling, and it's the first time I've ever gone through something like this. Even though it happened just under two weeks ago, I only fully got over it a few days back. As I mentioned earlier, I have severe anxiety when I get that kind of attention. What made it worse was that I was using an account with my face and first name on it, I'd never been in a situation like this before, especially receiving this kind of attention from another guy. Looking back, I wish I had blocked him immediately after he started making me uncomfortable. Because of this experience, I've enabled the Discord setting where it doesn't automatically show images. I also messaged one of the admins of the Minecraft server and told them what happened. They said they'd take action. What's even more disturbing is that the guy is actually a regular member of the server and holds a high rank so I can't help but wonder if I'm the only person he's harassed, or if he's done this to someone younger. Please, learn from my mistakes. This is the kind of stuff you read about but never think could happen to you. But when it does, it's an entirely different experience.
One year ago, I, 17, befriended a young man, 18, on Discord. We matched each other's whenever he opened, it was always a surprise, which kept me deeply invested in getting to know him. We got along very well, and spent many evenings chatting and discussing various topics. Eventually, I was introduced to two more of his friends, or rather, classmates. Let's call them Steve and Luke. Their trio had a strange dynamic. Steve and the young man I later came to know as Tom were quite close and often treated Luke as their little plaything. This made me feel empathetic toward Luke, and I tended to take his side during arguments, which led to them frequently joking that Luke would show up at my house with flowers if I kept defending him. There was a slight rivalry within the trio, and my arrival only intensified it. All of them started bad-mouthing each other to me in private. Eventually, Tom and Steve began to avoid Luke altogether and prevented him from joining our conversations. This went on for a while until Tom suddenly started acting strangely towards me. He began deleting all the messages he sent me and even removed me from his contacts everywhere. This happened several times before I finally had enough. I decided to cut ties with all of them and vowed never to reconnect. Then one day I received a message, Hey, remember me? We used to talk. Who is this? It's me, Steve. Tom and I started a Minecraft server. Wanna join? I agreed eagerly and got invited to the corresponding Discord server. There were a few others in there who aren't relevant to this story. I got along with most people, but especially with Steve. We began spending time together outside of the Minecraft server and public group voice chats. We often went down internet rabbit holes, discussing bizarre topics like how Islamic pixie fairies with pride flags would save the universe. These rabbit holes became a significant part of our conversations. However, everything changed on March 17, 2024, when I received eight missed calls from Steve at 8.35 p.m. with the text, Pick up, you'll never forget this. Me. Wait. Give me a moment. Steve, pick up. When do I ever call you randomly? It's important. Ongoing call, March 17, 2024. 8.50 p.m., one minute, Steve turned on his camera and asked me a question that still makes me feel nauseous to this day. This is your house, right? I remained silent for a moment and tried to deny it was my house. Then, another voice chimed in, and it was Tom. It was surprisingly easy tracking you down from your mother's Facebook backyard view pictures. When I tell you I felt sick to my core, I mean it. I quickly threw on a sweater, grabbed my phone, and my mind switched to autopilot. I just wanted them gone as soon as possible. My mother asked why I was heading out in the middle of March, at 9 p.m., during a rainy night. I lied, saying friends were there. No way, you're actually real, Tom said when I opened the wooden gate to our garden. Both men stood with their backs to the streetlights, and I didn't have the courage to shine my phone's flashlight on them. I stayed close to the door as Steve offered me a puff of his cigarette. I declined and stood there in awkward silence while they stared at me. The conversation was dry and shallow. Every passing minute made my stomach twist more as everything felt off. I stood there for about 30 minutes before they made an offer. Want to come with us? I immediately declined and turned to close the garden gate. Tom quickly added that it was a joke and then insisted on having a cup of coffee inside with my parents. I declined again and desperately tried to get them to leave. Thanks, man. I feel unsafe in my own home now. Just kidding. They texted me later. Sorry. Hope we didn't scare you too badly. They added. I brushed off the weird encounter and moved on with my life. Though I found myself checking more frequently to see if anyone was outside waiting for me. On April 29th, 2024, are you home? No. Are you sure? The lights in your room are on. I'm not home, but... Go away. But I can see you, Lolo. Look at the window to your left. There they were again at my doorstep, this time in broad daylight. It was the first time I got a good look at their faces. Steve waved and nervously smiled. I nodded. What is it this time? I asked. Want to come with us to a friend's house? No, I don't. Please don't waste your gas driving all the way here, I replied. But they didn't leave. Steve begged me to let him fill his water bottle inside and Tom needed to use the bathroom. I declined both requests and pointed to a field where Tom could relieve himself. Eventually I gave in and took Steve's water bottle inside to fill it myself. When I returned, 
They seemed satisfied and finally left, but not before a strange request. May I give you a handshake? Steve asked. It was the most awkward handshake I've ever experienced. Humans have an instinctive sense of how long is appropriate for a handshake before it gets weird. Steve did not. He held my hand for a solid four seconds and then joked, I'll never wash my hand again. On May 6, 2024, Hey, we need to talk. I really want to tell you something. Steve messaged me. After a long conversation, it finally became clear what he wanted. Steve confessed that he liked me, even though he knew I had a boyfriend. I politely declined and decided that this was it. I was cutting all ties with these people. Afterward, I received multiple messages from various alt accounts apologizing, but I ignored them all. On June 15th, 2024, my birthday, a card dropped on the doormat. It read, For all the tears and pain, grief also gives you emotional gain. Inside, there was a short message. Happy birthday, have fun, look in your cabinets. It was a funeral grievance card. After that, there was complete silence. To the weird Discord duo, let's not meet again, ever. I've always liked chat rooms. I think they're an excellent place to meet new people and be social. It's especially helpful when your social skills lack a certain depth, like mine. I find it difficult to speak to people face to face. I often babble or say something inappropriate, and when they walk away I'm always left feeling dejected and crestfallen. It's the same even when I'm drunk, just with more confidence in my awkwardness. Social situations are hard when you're socially inept. So when I discovered Discord, I thought it would be the perfect place to make some friends without dealing with the awkwardness of a public meetup. I joined a few random Discord servers, Anxiety's Us, The Socially Broken, Fans of Mythology, Blair Witch Talk, I could go on. I'd spent hours scouring the 20-something servers I joined. I was active and met a few cool people along the way. It was nice not to feel like an outcast for once. The great thing about these chat rooms was that I didn't have to pretend, and I didn't have to talk to people I didn't like. It was heaven. For a while. One late evening, I was on a server called Weird Things I Say, sending memes and gifts to this guy I met named Herbal Cat. When a random invite popped up in the corner, you've been invited to join Children of Ader Deus. It was strange. The icon was of a cartoon character I'd never seen before. A deep purple face with frighteningly realistic crimson red eyes. It was unsettling. Every time I glanced at it, the expression seemed to change slightly. The character had no hair, and around its neck was a dark burgundy scarf. I was intrigued, I admit. I hovered my mouse over the accept button and eventually clicked it. The page loaded instantly, and I was in the chat room. What struck me immediately was that there was only one room. Chernobog's Unite. I clicked into it, and as soon as I did, I was inundated with mentions. Lover of Seda H, welcome, I'm Joshua. We are so glad to have you here. To properly accept you into the circle, we need the following. A strand of hair, one fingernail from the third finger of your left hand, a toenail, and a small vial of fresh blood. Leave these on your doorstep, and they will be collected. Once you're in, you are in. Ederdeus, I'm Joshua. Please have these offerings prepared by midnight tomorrow. Once you've been integrated, we'll send you a list to choose a name from. Naturally, I was spooked. I figured it was some sort of prank, and I refused to humor these lunatics. I left the server, logged off, and didn't think about it for the rest of the night. A few weeks passed without incident. One night, I was browsing the web, shopping and scrolling through Reddit when a Discord icon popped up. It was a private message from Ader Deus. Hi Joshua, you failed to present your offering and Chernobog must be appeased. It has seen you, and it's watching you. Present the offering immediately, or it will take your heart. My heart was pounding, threatening to burst from my chest. This isn't funny anymore, please leave me alone, I typed back. I unplugged my computer, trying to calm my rapid heartbeat. My breathing was shallow, and my chest felt tight. I lay in bed for hours, the darkness of my room closing in on me. Every time I closed my eyes, I saw the face from that cartoon icon. Just as sleep was about to take me, I saw something in the corner of my room. 
I rubbed my eyes, and that's when I saw it. A shape crouching under my desk. Its eyes were glowing. I tried to move, but I couldn't. The creature began to crawl out from under the desk and stood up. It was tall, with gangly arms hanging loosely by its sides. Its skin was pale with a purple hue, as if it had been submerged in ice. It gleamed in the dim light. It was bald and naked, with a deep burgundy scarf draped around its neck. It moved closer, towering over me as I lay there, utterly paralyzed. The creature lifted its long, stringy arm, and a scythe appeared in its cold grip. I managed to regain some movement and fumbled for the light switch. When bright light flooded the room, it was gone. I didn't sleep for the rest of the night. It's been weeks since that encounter. I haven't slept in four days now. I deleted my Discord account, but somehow the children of Aterdeus found my personal email and phone number. I'm certain they know where I live, too. I keep finding disturbing things outside my apartment door. Bloody strands of hair, fingernails. I don't know who they belong to, and I dread finding out. It's been getting worse. Last night, I found a still beating heart. I don't know what's going to happen to me, but I know it won't be good. Hooded figures stand outside my window every night, and among them is the creature, scythe in hand. I live in constant fear. If you ever receive an invite from a Discord server named Children of Outer Deus, I beg you, don't accept it. They're scraping at my door now, the sound of metal against wood. I think it's outside. Now this happened a few months back, and while some things still seem fresh, I've tried hard to block others. IF14 was on a Discord server. It was a very feminine server, with mostly girls and a few guys. That's where I met the predator of our story. He was asking for someone to make an art commission for him, and that he would pay in Roblox. I volunteered since I was broke and thought, hey, my art is decent enough to sell, so we DM each other about it. I finished and he pays me. We kept talking for a few months and now consider him a friend. I realize now looking back on it that he was grooming me. For a while we stopped talking and then I DM him again asking if he wanted another art commission. He asked for a picture of me, and I sent one. He said I was beautiful and stunning. I don't really remember how it happened, but he ended up manipulating me into sending him inappropriate pictures of me for Roblox. I cried myself to sleep that night. I was in a very vulnerable state at the time, and had lost someone I had been really close with. All the stuff he was doing took a toll on my mental health and other things. He kept asking for photos and videos of me doing vulgar things to myself and for the camera. It got to the point where I wanted to die. I tried to stop, and I told other people to spread the word about him on Discord. But there was a problem. He found out and threatened me, saying that if I told anyone he would expose my photos and other things on his YouTube channel. I was scared and couldn't tell anyone. I felt trapped in a bubble of water with no way out. After a month it had finally settled down and ended. Or so I thought. My mom went through my phone and saw the things he said. I was victim shamed and told her I wanted to die. It was rough. A few months later, I ended up in a mental hospital for intent to kill myself. It really helped me. I'm finally on the meds I needed and I'm slowly getting better. I blocked him and people who he was friends with on every social media my mom didn't delete. And that's the story for now. Warning, this story contains disturbing content. Reader discretion is advised. If you're under 18, it's best to hold on to your innocence a bit longer. Realizing the world isn't as perfect as it seems can be a harsh awakening. And I'd rather not be the one to shatter your view of humanity. For those who choose to stay, let me introduce myself. I go by the pseudonym X Gaito X and I run a Discord server where controversial YouTubers share ideas so chilling they often keep me awake at night. I started this server for the thrill, but now I deeply regret it. The reason is simple. Some of these YouTubers have grown bold enough to act on their dark ideas. They operate under alternative YouTube accounts to maintain their anonymity, and their channels are gaining traction. For example, 
One well-known YouTuber has created an account where he breaks into the homes of elderly people, dressed as a demon, terrifies them on camera, then vanishes before the authorities can arrive. On one occasion, he scared a woman to death. He boasted about desecrating her body for over a week on the Discord server. The images of her eyes gouged out have been widely shared, and they'll haunt me for the rest of my life. Then there's another popular YouTuber who runs an account where she digs up caskets and spends the night lying next to corpses. She does this under the cover of darkness to avoid detection. Often, she wraps the corpse's arms around her neck in a grotesque embrace and occasionally, she even sleeps with her face pressed against theirs. She claims to do this to satisfy her growing fascination with the macabre. I could fill books with the amount of horrifying content being discussed on this server, and I will one day. Until that time, I feel compelled to anonymously share the secret conversations taking place on my Discord server to warn you about this unsettling movement. What follows is a particularly frightening conversation that took place between two YouTubers, whose names you would undoubtedly recognize just yesterday morning. Hey, I've got an idea. Are you awake? Yeah, what's up? What if we create an account where we grind up bugs, put them in food, and serve it to unsuspecting people? That's intense. I think it could be popular. A lot of people would find that entertaining. we just have to blur our faces. A channel like that wouldn't last more than a few weeks. We wouldn't want it affecting our main accounts. Of course, keeping our identities hidden is key. We've got to protect our reputations. Absolutely. And hey, I managed to build the device. It works flawlessly. Amazing. When are you planning to use it? Hopefully this weekend. I just need to find a tourist to test it on. Ideally someone traveling alone. That's smart. Do you have a location in mind? I do. There's an abandoned shack in the woods a few miles past my house. Perfect. Have you soundproofed it yet? Of course. I'm not trying to get caught. Just be cautious, that's all I'm saying. If you play this right, you could get a month's worth of content and become a legend. Especially on the dark web. That's the plan. I'm tempted to reveal the nature of this device and the identity of the YouTuber who plans on using it. But I'm too scared to, because I don't want to be their first victim. All I can say is, if you're a tourist traveling alone in the United States right now, stay vigilant. Because if you don't, you might end up on my Discord server. Your body forever scared, but your image immortalized. This is a 100% true story that I need to share because I need help deciphering what happened. Last night, on September 1st, I was playing Fortnite with my good friend Ezekiel, a guy I've known for a few years now. Toward the end of our session, around 11.30 p.m., our mics started malfunctioning in-game, so we decided to stop playing and switched over to Discord to chat about whatever came up. We started the call and began talking about video games. The last topic I remember discussing was the idea of the Nintendo 3 Desi Seconds getting a PUBG port, which we laughed about. Suddenly, on my end, the call disconnected as if he had hung up. I called him twice, but he didn't answer, so... I assumed he had gone to bed or didn't feel like talking anymore. I continued my night watching videos on YouTube. Around 010 AM, he sent me some texts. We called Discord again. And he told me that he had been talking to me for the past half hour about video games, specifically Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Cyberpunk 2077, and Watch Dogs 3. He mentioned that they had in-depth conversations about these games with what I'll call the imposter. I told him it wasn't me because, for me, the call had disconnected ten minutes into the conversation. He thought I was joking, but I swear I wasn't. To confirm I wasn't lying, he asked if I had finished watching the Cyberpunk 2077 48-minute gameplay footage, since that's what he and the imposter had discussed. I told him I hadn't even finished the video, and I had only watched the first few minutes. Then, out of nowhere, the call disconnected again. I messaged him, and this is what he said. Later that morning, he elaborated further on what happened during the first and second calls. Feeling uneasy and thinking I was getting hacked, I deleted my Discord account, blocking it from messaging and calling. Yet, even after deleting the account, the imposter sent Ezekiel messages and called him repeatedly, but Ezekiel didn't answer. 
It kept calling until around 1 a.m., then finally stopped. He insists it was my voice the same way I stutter, pause before speaking, and even my unique laugh. After exchanging messages on Snapchat, we decided to sleep and investigate further in the morning. Since Ezekiel lives nearby, he planned to come over later so we can figure this out. I reopened my Discord account earlier today to investigate. A small update, as I write this, Ezekiel received another call from my Discord that I didn't make, so we believe the imposter is still active on my account. I really need help figuring out what's going on, as I fear for my safety and my friends. The imposter can mimic my voice and laugh so perfectly that Ezekiel, who has known me for years, couldn't tell the difference. Additionally, my girlfriend called to tell me she tried calling my phone three times this morning. All calls went through, but when she tried to speak, the call turned static and disconnected. The strange thing is, I never received these calls. I'm mentioning this just in case it's relevant. Update, this is getting even stranger. It's happening again. Ezekiel and I are currently on Discord, trying to see if this phenomenon will repeat. So far we have results. I told him that if he contacted the imposter again to ask when my anniversary was. The imposter got it right, October 19th. It even knew that the AP physics exam we took this past year was on my birthday. One of the worst days of my life. There's more. The imposter hijacked our voice chat while we were playing Fortnite about an hour ago. I couldn't speak to him, but Ezekiel said we were talking the entire time, with me giving callouts and everything. I don't know what to think anymore. I don't know if he's pranking me, and he says he doesn't know if I'm playing a trick on him. If we're both telling the truth, then something serious is happening, and we're caught in the middle of it. Update, September 3rd. The imposter hasn't contacted Ezekiel for over 12 hours now. Hopefully it's gone. Now, let's talk theories. I saw someone suggest an alternate universe, which would be intriguing, but it doesn't seem probable. I can't think of any other possibilities, so feel free to share your theories in the comments. Update, night of September 3rd. The day was mostly quiet. It was Labor Day, so I couldn't check to see if anything was amiss. Around 1.30 p.m. today, the imposter struck again, sending Ezekiel a message. Hey Daniel, you still want to play some Fortnite? For context, Ezekiel prefers being called Daniel. I'll keep updating whenever the imposter resurfaces. Oh, I almost forgot. While checking my task manager today, I noticed three instances of the Discord app running in the background. I'm not sure if that's normal, but it seems suspicious. Another oddity is that while playing Fortnite with my younger brother and his friends today, the imposter didn't hijack the voice chat at all. Unlike when I was playing with Daniel, it's weird how it only happens with him. Tomorrow, I'll run more tests on Discord to see if I can reach the imposter, but for now, signing off. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell to be alerted of all future narrations. See you next time.